This evening, first on our agenda, the Ghana Police Force has unveiled a robust Christmas policing plan to enhance security and ensure public safety during the holiday season. Stay tuned for updates on road closures and announcements, ensuring citizens are well informed during this festive period. Moving on, after a seven-year hiatus, Guy Expo, Ghana's premier trade fair and exhibition is back featuring 250 exhibitors. We'll explore the significance of Guy Expo, showcasing locally made products and fostering innovation in agro-processing. In a tragic incident, 29-year-old Neil Majumitu has been charged and remanded to prison for the murder of his fiance, 32-year-old Ashmin Mahadio. We'll provide updates on the legal proceedings, including Mahadio's identification of Majumitu as the shooter, post-mortem findings, and the evolving charges in this case. Regionally, a hospital in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince, had to be evacuated due to nearby gang violence. We'll discuss the escalating lawlessness in Haiti and Kenny's decision to send 1,000 police officers to have restore order back by the UN. Lastly, fears of an imminent volcanic eruption in Iceland are growing, yet tourists continue to visit in the thousands. We'll explore the unique draw of Iceland's volatile geology for tourists and the challenges posed by the looming threats of a volcanic eruption. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Hella News Update for November 16, 2023. I'm Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the Ghana Police Force has announced a robust Christmas policing plan to bluster security and safeguard citizens during the holiday season. The plan outlines measures to address the anticipated rise in commercial activities and ensure public safety. Commissioner of Police Acting Clifton Hicken emphasized the collaborative effort between the police and the private sector, particularly the private security fraternity, to enhance security with increased presence and coordination in various locations. Effective from November 15 to January 15, 2024, the initiatives include intensified foot traffic, static, anti-crime and vehicular patrols in hotspot areas. There will be 24 hours deployment to mitigate crime and enhance traffic management, fixed point placements along main thoroughfares, roving motorcycle and motor vehicle patrols and support from the Ghana Police Force Command Centers are part of the strategy. To streamline traffic and ensure public safety, regions will be divided into sectors with dedicated traffic ranks. Specific measures include a double lane at the Demerara Harbour Bridge from December 24th to December 31st, restricted motor lorry access on weekdays along the East Bank Public Road, priority for crisscross patrols for those entering or exiting Ghana at the Chedi Jagan International Airport, emergency parking for large vehicles at the National Stadium Tarmac in Providence aims to alleviate bridge congestion. The Ghana Police Force plans to provide continuous updates on road closures and announcements through various channels, including radio, television, social media. Concurrently, the Ghana Police Force will conduct awareness programs nationwide to disseminate safety information and ensure that citizens are well informed about the plans and routes during the heightened holiday period. The comprehensive approach seeks to create a secure environment for citizens and mitigate potential risks associated with increased activities during the Christmas season. In other news, Guy Expo, Ghana's premier trade fair and exhibition, is returning after a seven-year hiatus. The event, featuring 250 exhibitors, is being held at the Safai Exhibition Center from today, November 16th to Sunday, November 19th, with the team transforming Guyana through investment, innovation, and resilience. The Ministry of Tourism, Industry, and Commerce's Communications Manager, Cardinal McClure, highlighted Guy Expo as an opportunity to showcase locally made products, fostering innovation, and preparing agro processors for export. The official opening ceremony was scheduled for 4 p.m. today, with gates opening at 6 p.m. The event includes a kids' zone, food court, and various entertainment, including a chutney night, local artist performances, and steel pan entertainment. Tickets are priced at $500 for adults and $300 for children, with parking provided for patrons. Guy Expo initiated in 1995 and held annually from 2004 to 2016, aims to rejuvenate its role as Ghana's largest trade and investment exposition. We now turn our attention to the courts. 29-year-old Neil Madrimutu 
was charged and remanded to prison for the murder of his fiancée, 32-year-old Ashwin Mahadio, when he appeared at the New Amsterdam Magistrates Court earlier today, November 16th. Madrimitu appeared before Magistrate Peter Hughes, where the charges was read to him. The court heard that on October 1st, 2023, in Williamsburg quarantine, Mahadio was shot in the neck. Mahadio identified Madrimutu as the shooter in a video statement to the police from her hospital bed. She was shot outside her home while preparing for her bridal shower and remained hospitalized until her demise. The postmortem revealed her cause of death as septic anemia shock, low burn pneumonia, and gunshot injuries. Additionally, she was paralyzed due to the shooting. Madrimutu claimed an unknown assailant shot the woman outside the house. He was charged with attempted murder and released on $500,000 bail. Despite initial charges of attempted murder, the case was upgraded after Mahadio's death on November 12th. Stick around when we return. Luzignan, construction worker arrested for narcotics possession, and First Lady Aria Ali advocates for education and economic empowerment to drive gender equality at Caribbean Forum. <sighs> Not a single bar of service. Not with us. Digicel officially has the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speed Test, recognizes Digicel as the network with the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Be it in Aishelton or in Etteringbang, we got you covered. Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, problem granny i want money for bar for those surgery i was dancing and i fall and fracture my hip if you need some quick money you should check lenders jewelry and pawn shop lenders jewelry and pawn shop lot 238 south road border georgetown get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours we also accept vehicles lenders best rates longest payback period boys i get through plus i could dance again <laughs> lenders jewelry and pawn shop <laughs> Modern Optical Services. Three sixteen Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone two two six one zero eight two. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of pets and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231 7878 and 223 8955. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers! He is credit! And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, casserole, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, white spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document planting flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil, we serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she'll pop up by her, not enough things. She feels she alone can cook. 
but she wrote the name wrong. He shaved like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Welcome back. First Lady Aria Ali emphasized the pivotal role of advancing education and economic empowerment among women in fostering gender equality, a key driver for economic growth and human progress. Speaking at the Caribbean Gender Empowerment Forum at the Ghana Marriott Hotel, she underscored the importance of gender equality as a social justice imperative aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. The forum convened policymakers, experts, and stakeholders to discuss collaborative strategies involving government, civil society organizations, and the private sector to support gender empowerment in Guyana and the Caribbean. Topics included insights into the impact of climate change on women and girls, and advocating for gender responsive policies and budgets. Today, the importance of advancing justice for women is more pressing than ever. Crises generated by challenges linked to, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, demographic and technological shifts, as well as violence and insecurity, including gender-based violence and harassment, undermine our fundamental human rights and affect women's chances of building a good life for themselves. This is a threat to economic growth and human progress. Education was identified as a fundamental right and a critical factor in enhancing women's and girls' equality, voice, and power. The First Lady acknowledged obstacles hindering women and girls' access to education. She highlighted the Menstrual Hygiene Initiative benefiting over 30,000 school-age females, addressing the issue of girls missing school due to the inability to afford sanitary napkins. Education is critical to building agency, equality, voice, and power. Yes, power for our women and girls. Our intervention in this particular area must therefore be bold. And so nothing less than transformational will be necessary to ensure we truly equip our girls for the future. And while we make progress for girls, we must not forget about the thousands of women who have already missed out on education. They need different educational support, as well as access to childcare services, technical and vocational training, training in life skills, and decent paid work. Addressing economic empowerment, Mrs. Ali stressed the need to unleash the economic power of women for sustained economic growth. She called for collaborative efforts to build upon successful gender equality initiatives. In other news, in a recent development, a 42-year-old construction worker from Luzignan found himself in police custody after being discovered in possession of suspected narcotics believed to be cocaine on Wednesday, November 16. The arrest took place when police officers responding to a domestic violence report made against a suspect the previous day visited his residence in Luzignan. He was informed of the domestic violence allegations, cautioned, and subsequently subjected to a search. During the search, law enforcement uncovered a transparent plastic bag containing several pieces of creamish brick-like substance suspected to be cocaine. The suspect was told of the nature of the offense, cautioned once again, and subsequently taken into custody. Following the arrest, the suspected narcotics was confirmed as cocaine and amounted to 8.1 grams. The construction worker remains in police custody, awaiting formal charges related to the possession of illicit substances. Don't go away after the break. War in Gaza, Israel's claim of rights to self-defense question, and South Africa protests, debate on cutting ties with Israel. Experience more than award-winning speed. Way more. Get the best that LTE has to offer on Digicel, officially the fastest mobile network in Guyana. Ukla, the company behind Speedtest, recognizes Digicel as the best mobile network in Guyana. With the best LTE experience and the fastest data speeds, experience it all with Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Comments make fashionable faces. 
Cheers for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and poised cake. For the noodles, all it is, we'll be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, five spice, and our purpose, Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you don't know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Radhika went to the supermarket and she proper buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote it even wrong. It's shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. When you need money and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of pets and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. A hospital in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince, has been evacuated by police after nearby gang violence. More than 100 patients, nearly half of them children, had to be removed from the Fronten Hospital Center. The hospital is in the large Shantitown of City Soleil, where there have been reports of unrest in recent days following the death of a gang leader. Haiti is currently in the grip of unprecedented levels of lawlessness. Gangs have taken increasing control of Port-au-Prince since the assassination of the country's president in 2021 threw Haiti into a political crisis. Thousands of Haitians have fled their homes in the capital, while more than 2,400 others have been killed, according to the latest figures from the UN. Kenya had said it will send 1,000 police officers to Haiti to help restore order a move that has been backed by the UN. Internationally, members of South Africa's parliament are expected to debate a motion to cut diplomatic ties with Israel as the war in Gaza continues. South Africa withdrew its ambassador from Israel five years ago due to what it said were human rights violations, but voters remain divided on the conflict. Al Jazeera's Fumida Miller reports. <laughs> As the war on Gaza continues, South Africans have held dozens of protests, prayer meetings and pickets. Some in support of Israel, others like this one in Cape Town calling for a ceasefire and end to the genocide. However, the protests quickly descended into chaos, 
as police fired water cannon and stun grenades. Some blame tensions between opposing groups, while others hold the police responsible. They could have uh, de-escalated the situation uh, much more professionally, even if there was agitation on both sides, and we say, and there was, and uh, which there was, and we say, even the even the law enforcement uh, only added to escalate the situation. While South Africa's government supports a two-state solution, President Cyril Ramaphosa has warned of Israel committing genocide. South Africa has in recent days recalled all its diplomats from Israel, which many within or supporting the Jewish community say is concerning. There have been incidents that you find of boycotts of Jewish businesses and these sorts of things, and I think that that makes the community feel very uncomfortable. We can't have a government that is choosing side. We did, uh, we did this thing called uh, non-aligned with Russia. But why is it that on Israel we become ideological and we become radical on this issue? Christians in this country stand and support Israel. Free, free Palestine. As the war continues, so do the demonstrations. This one led by school children. We have a moral responsibility to actually show them that we need to fight for something, especially in a country that has seen apartheid. We want to spread awareness as much as we can. Um, what the genocide that is taking place. Um, thousands of people have lost their lives. Opposition party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, wants the government to cut diplomatic and economic ties with Israel. It's put forward a motion for that to be debated in Parliament. A debate that while the governing African National Congress may support, is likely to see divisions within Parliament too. Famida Miller, Al Jazeera. Israel says it has a right to defend itself in the response to last month's attack by Hamas, but many people have accused it of breaching international law and ignoring the root cause of the conflict, Al Jazeera's Rasul Sadar reports. After Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu once again labeled the group a terrorist organization. And the leaders of the six major Western nations released a joint statement expressing their support for Israel's right to self-defense. But many analysts say Israel's war on Gaza cannot be justified as self-defense because it's an occupying power and Palestinians in Gaza are an occupied people. The Israeli response cannot by any stretch of the imagination, be described as a measure of self-defense. Look at the scale of the killing. That is not self-defense. That is slaughter of civilians on an industrial scale. Over the years, dozens of United Nations General Assembly resolutions have supported liberation movements in their struggle for self-determination. Occupied people have the right to resist and that includes armed resistance. Israel has occupied Palestinian territories, the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem for decades. In 1993, the Palestine Liberation Organization and Israel signed the Oslo Accords. The Palestinian side recognized Israel. But the occupation continued. Illegal Israeli settlements expanded. Peaceful protests were violently suppressed. Election results rejected. In January 2006, Hamas won a fair and free election, not just in Gaza, but in the West Bank uh, as well. The United States and European Union, to their eternal shame, backed Israel and joined Israel in um, economic warfare and eventually managed to overthrow the Hamas uh, government. So Hamas did try the parliamentary road to power, but that avenue was blocked. For more than five weeks, Israel has imposed a complete siege on already blockaded Gaza, cutting off essential supplies and forcibly displacing hundreds of thousands of Palestinians to the southern part of the Gaza Strip. The Israeli plan is to make life utterly impossible in the south. People will escape from the hell of Gaza. So yes, I would say that Israel is attempting ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians in Gaza. Thousands of Palestinians have been killed in Israel's relentless bombardment of Gaza. Health ministry figures show a Palestinian child is killed every 10 minutes. 
With Netanyahu declaring the Israeli army will remain in Gaza even after the war, Palestinians have little hope of a future free of occupation. Rasul Serdar, Al Jazeera. And finally, fears of an imminent volcanic eruption in Iceland are growing, but tourists are still visiting in the thousands. Iceland's volatile geology is one of the key draws for tourists from around the world, Al Jazeera's Harry Fusset reports. Driving into the heart of Iceland's volcanic exclusion zone, the town of Grindavik lies empty, its nearly 4,000 residents ordered to leave in a hurry after the earth was shaken by a sudden inflow of magma on Friday. Fears of an eruption remain high. Even without one, the earthquake swarm has left wide-scale damage. But this is about much more than simply repairing the damage that has been done here. There is serious consideration being given to whether this place will ever be habitable again. The exclusion zone includes one of Iceland's most famous tourist destinations, the Blue Lagoon Geothermal Pool. Efforts are underway to protect it and a nearby power plant. Iceland's tourism minister says so far visitors have not been put off. The international airport is open and it is safe. And so we uh, expect that we will have tourists go to other lagoons, which we have uh, all over the country. This isn't a first for Iceland's tourism industry. The 2010 eruption of Eyjafjallajökull Yukatl caused massive disruption. But the publicity sparked global interest in Iceland's geology and helped quadruple foreign visitor numbers to more than 2 million a year. 10% of them visiting Iceland's lava center, a short drive from the site of that devastating eruption. It was a huge um, disaster while it lasted. Uh, but after that, we've, we've reaped the benefits, not only in tourism, but also uh, regionally when it comes to agriculture and other things. So I think that's kind of one of the message from Icelanders that are used to this harsh nature. Like if you treat nature kindly, it will treat you kindly back. Nature's kindness might feel in short supply in and around Grindavik right now, but in Iceland, people have long learned to live with and adapt to the powerful forces that shape their land. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Grindavik, Southern Iceland. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is a 3D weather forecast. And that's Safety V2 Headline News for this Thursday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 5.30 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.